Hey, Lucretia. Hi, love. How are you? I am doing good. Walter, how you feeling? Uh, much better. Oh, good. I was telling Ooh. Dr. Sawyer, I'm, I'm, I'm just empty-headed right now from this weekend. Got some of my classes started midterms, and on Sunday, I started writing, typing, and studying, and... I don't want to hear no more. I'm about to block you. I love you. <laughs> I get jealous easy. <laughs> All I can tell you wow. is at noon and ended by 10.30 that night. <laughs> I told him it sounded like he must be in college. <laughs> I never heard of such a thing. <laughs> that, that, that's called hitting the midnight oil, midnight oil. burning the midnight oil. Well, I need some over here because my candles don't do what yours do. <laughs> Anoint them. Anoint your candles. No. <laughs> uh oh, wait a minute. Hold on. I'm gonna have to do something. Shoot, y'all, y'all giving me some secrets of the success. Shoot. You, oh, you, you just, you know, you gotta set your mind to it and be determined to get it done. Yeah, but, but Mr. Towsley said, anoint your candles. What does that mean, Mr. Towsley? <laughs> In other words, anoint yourself with the holy oil and, and let God be your guide on getting this stuff done. Yeah. Because the worst part. That sounds like what we talked about last week in terms of charms. <laughs> magic. Because the most time I spent doing all my work was for life science. <sighs> It, it made me remember why I didn't like science when I was in right. junior high and high school. <laughs> okay, you wouldn't die hearts, second I'm going to get would started. Um, but I'm going to use some, um, some of the chat stuff and make it easier for us to work back and forth. That'll, that'll leave Lucrecia out for a moment, but you can listen. You'll be all right. Uh, I'm listening. Uh, yeah. Uh, so we're getting ready for the, the midterm exam on um, Wednesday. I'm going to, uh, uh, it's up on, it'll be up on Canvas. Uh, it's on the module. It's also under quizzes. Uh, and you can access it anytime after Wednesday morning. Uh, you'll have till, I think I gave it to, to midnight or five o'clock. I can't remember which on Wednesday to turn it in. But if you don't get it in, you can turn it in late. That's, a, that's also cool. Uh, the, the test is 12 questions. Uh, 11 of them are matching multiple choice and true false. One of them is a fairly brief essay that summarizes what I'm looking for for what you've been learning. Um, so if, think about that. If you have questions about that, we can talk about it at the end of the class. Now, the first thing I want to do is tell you a story that's related to why it's important to have a sense of history and have a sense of the, the timeline of how things fit before and after each other, okay? When I went, to, went away to college uh, at uh, Maryville College in Tennessee, a little, little uh, pres Presbyterian, small Presbyterian college, in uh, south of Knoxville. Um, <clears throat> and I think it was the first year I was there. It may have been the second. So this is either 1962 or 1963, which is before a lot of you were around. Um, and on that year, uh, I think maybe for the first time, a group of black students started attending Maryville College. It was a good thing. They were welcomed at the college. It doesn't seem to be a problem, except these, these, this small group of people were Baptists. And they decided, since they're Baptists and they're coming from out of town, um, living on the college campus, they'd like to go to the Baptist church in town. It's just this one Baptist church in town. Of course, it's a white Baptist church. So these kids show up at church on Sunday morning in the fall. They're not terribly well welcomed, as you might imagine. This is in Tennessee. Um, 
they came back and told the college about it, got the attention of the chaplain of the college. Uh, his name was E. F. A. Campbell, uh, who was an old, he was kind of retired, very strong civil rights advocate and very wise pastoral man. So we went to see the Baptist pastor down, down the street. And he told this pastor he couldn't see any reason why <clears throat> these kids couldn't attend his church. And the pastor said, but Dr. Campbell, it's too soon. Have you heard this story before? <laughs> and old Dr. Campbell looked the man in the eye and said, it's been a hundred years. This is 1963. There's a historical connection here. What happened 100 years before 1963? You're talking about 1903. 19, 100 years before 1963. 1863. Uh, 1863. Yeah. Oh, that would be the slave after the slavery. Yeah. yeah. What the happened? beginning of the Great Awakening of the church, I think, somewhere along in there. No, well, no, it's, that's different than Great Awakening. It has to do with slavery. The, Emanc no, the, the uh, Emancipation, the Civil Bingo. Rights. The em Emancipation Proclamation. <clears throat> Lincoln said these folks are free. They're right. free to do what they need to do in this country. So Dr. Campbell says it's been 100 years. What are you waiting for <laughs> right. to catch up with this deal? So you see how having a sense of how things have happened and how long it's been and how things are connected is important. I don't know the rest of the story, whether those kids ever got to go back to that Baptist church or not, but I love that story about Dr. Campbell. So what I'm working on in this class is for you to have a sense of the breadth and length and the the, the blocks of time that go into making, making up history and beginning to see how what happened in 1444 and what happened in 1515 and what happened in 1492 and what happened in 1619 um, and so forth how does that connect with what's going on in America today? That's, those are the questions we're working on. All right. So um, I sent you a review uh, paper and I'll put it up on the screen as well. Um, if you've had a chance to look at this, I'm gonna give you a chance to, to look over what's in front of you or I can scroll through this one and look at it. Are there questions that you see looking at that you can't quite figure out either what the right answer would be or what I'm getting at? And I, for what I want you to do as you think about that, put it in the chat, mm -hmm. type, a, type a to everyone uh, and your question. And then I'll take them as they come up and we'll talk about them, all right? Got it? Mm -hmm. Yes, oh. sir. It would be as paper, number two question. Thank <laughs> you. 
How are we doing? I'm not seeing any questions yet. You got me worried. Um, Maybe you know it all. That Then we can just call it off. And... <laughs> okay. All right, just checking. Dr. Sawyer, yes, uh, number eight, the characteristics of African religion. Do you want a piece of each of the uh, tribes discussed? Mm -hmm. uh, we'll put that in the chat. That's a good question. How do you chat? Oh. <laughs> it should be a little box at either at the bottom or top of your screen that says chat. It's like a message here. And you punch it. And then you type in your message. Uh -oh. I see you raised your hand. That's good. Did I? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, shit. Okay. Here we are. Y'all, thank you. Okay. Yeah, if you haven't learned how to chat yet, that's good. I, I'm glad to introduce <laughs> that. Okay. Okay. Uh, Mm. Okay, that's good. I'm seeing some questions. Oh, this is neat. <laughs> yeah. You can carry on a conversation on the side. You can also do a private conversation to somebody on who's on the screen. Really? Yeah. Oh my goodness. You can say you could did he just say what I think he said? Some of the historical chains again. <laughs> or you know, has he really lost his mind now? Who is this old man? <laughs> you can say those things and I'd never see it, you know. <laughs> so no. I, I've been trying to teach you to, to be suspicious of the agenda of any historical teacher you got. So, that yeah. doesn't include technology because I'm my own culprit. Historical. Just to give me a question. Okay, I'm going to give you a couple more minutes. And Okay, good. Dr. Sawyer, um, yes, I wasn't in here. Um, I stepped out for a minute. Um, what, was, what, are we, what are we doing right now? <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, I, I'm asking you to look at the, at the, the, of trans at the review uh, page, pages that I sent you or it's up on the screen now. And do you have questions about any of that you, you want us to discuss in class? And then put that in the chat. Okay. I'm looking right now. Hold on here. I got to go back. Bye. Bye, the Europeans. P 
and question. Sure. Uh, How far you want me to scroll back up? Question. <laughs> Right there. <laughs> okay. Okay. See ya. Uh oh. -uh. I'll, I'll shoot. <laughs> okay. Save chat. Did it go through, Doc? Uh, I don't think I've seen anything from you yet. Okay. I'm doing so. You type it and then you put enter. You hit enter. Did you get it now? I don't see anything from you. Uh, Rats. Hmm. This technology doesn't like you, Gary. Yeah, uh, no, it doesn't. Guess it doesn't. Because I went. Gary, I am your sister. <laughs> Okay. I'm yeah, going to try everyone. And then hit the file. Your Let's computer. Jamal. Nope. Cancel that. I don't need that. Did you did you get my question? Let's see. I typed why I was at yes. a stoplight. I so got I don't it. Yep. I got it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. <sighs> Okay. I have others, but I'm uh, uh, working this phone and this steering wheel. That's all right. Let, we'll get started with him, and we can talk, take up others as we go. Mm -hmm. Okay. I don't know. It just don't like me. It just right. don't all like right. my question. Hang on to it. We'll take it. We'll take it in a minute. We'll we'll, we'll talk about it. <clears throat> Okay, um, let's go to uh, Ms. McKissick's question on Zerara's tears. It's a question mark. What are you asking about Zerara's tears? Well, remember when I read it, I read it at the library, so I don't have the book and I can't really pull the information. So when you was asking, okay, good, I don't, I'm at a stop sign. So it says, um, the characters, um, damn women, I can't see. Um, okay, yeah, I named the characters in that story, yeah. Henry and, and then, so, two. Um, two. Two. are you, oh no, that's, that's, I'm, I'm still, Misha, let me know when the light changes. Um, so when you say B, 1944, what do you mean? What about 1944? Like I'm lost right there. So then um, when you say D, the events, and you get to naming them, like, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of lost between that question. I mean, those answers, because I don't have that book in front of me. Okay. So do you remember any of the characters from that story? From Zerara? Um, the, those names, Henry and... Zurara and King Alfonso, Pope Nicholas. Zurara, yeah. Zurara, yeah, because I know he's, he's the one telling the story. Right. You know. yeah. But Henry, um, the navigator, he was there as sitting on the horse. Yeah, who was Prince he? Henry. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, and, yeah, and King he, Alfonso was anointed by the Pope to tell these people that they could do uh, to the captured Africans as they will. That's right, yeah. And who was Henry? Who? What's the relationship with Henry to all this thing? He was like the the prince over over Portugal during that time. Yeah, King the, Alfonso was the king of Portugal, and Henry was uh -huh. his third son, as it turns out. Okay. But he's building his own little mini empire by doing this by sending the ships out and capturing countries and slaves and bringing them <clears> back, and making a big name for himself. Um, I'm sorry. Uh, who did you say uh, King Alfonso was? Who's he's, who can say answer that question? Who is King Alfonso? He's the king of Portugal. King of right, Portugal. <laughs> he's he's Henry's daddy. And who is Pope Nicholas V? He was Pope that anointed them. 
Yeah, he, he wrote this, this papal letter that says, you all just go and do that because it'll be good for Jesus and it'll be good for you and it'll be good for the Pope and it'll save their souls. Yeah. Dr. Right. So you're on this number three. How far do you want to go in to each one of those characters? I just want you to know enough about who they are to place them in that story and, and what their general role is, what I just said. What I just said. What was that date, 1444? That was the date that they was having the uh, sale of the slaves in Portugal right. at that time. Right. That's when he brought them back, right? The date of the sale of the slaves. Okay. So um, when the question is, hold on, I'm getting ready to just stop. When the question is like, um, okay. When you say like C, Portugal, you just want us to tell what Portugal's significance is to the story. Uh, well, I mainly mean that because you know what country that was, what it took place in. Okay. So in history, you need to know the general time period, what date, where it, where it was in Portugal, and then okay. what happened or, the, or some of the events in general. Okay. I want you to kind of have that sense in your mind so that if somebody comes up with well, where did, where did slavery of Africans start? You can say, oh, it was in Portugal in 1444. Okay. See what I mean? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Um, how many, on the question seven, the question is, uh, the Protestant re reformers, I, I would think you should know several of them. Um, was it Calvin Wesley? Yeah, yeah, that's two. Wow. Luke, uh, Martin Luther. 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 Yeah. Luther. That's another one. Uh, John Whitecliffe. John yeah. Knox. Knox, right? Mm -hmm. I, my question to that was, how many of them did you want written down? I think you should be familiar with as many of them as we talked about in class. I'm, I'm not asking you to name them on the test. Okay. I just want you to be, for review, familiar with them so that you know who were these characters. So where was where was um, Martin Luther? What what country was he from? Uh, let me see my notes out here. Um, nice thing. Is it France? Nope. Because he came after Charlemagne. Uh. uh. I know Charlemagne that. Germany. Yeah, a long time after Charlemagne, but yes, he was Germany. Uh, and what date do we have remember from, from his nailing 95 theses on the wall? 1515. Exactly. 15, yep, 15, and what denomination did he found? This is a time, this is the hardest. Lutheran. 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 <laughs> okay, how about John Calvin? Where where what country was he in? Uh oh shoot. Uh, France. He was originally French, but that's not where he did his his re Reformation work. Oh, okay. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, Church. And what denominations did did Calvin form? Well, Calvin. Calvin is also known, and there's two other names that goes with that. He may not Calvinism. have one. Calvinism. The, and the uh, Presbyterian. Yeah. The North yeah. Switzerland. Presbyterians are, are Calvinists, and the Reformed churches are Calvinists. Yeah. And what so, was he earlier or after Martin Luther? He was after. after yeah. Martin Luther. Because yeah. didn't he kind of inspire him when he kind of like following some of the ideas of Martin but disagree with others? Exactly. Yeah. 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 The movement um, got started with Luther and then it started spreading and other people started picking it up. So Luther was, uh, Calvin was following that. Okay. Yeah. Um, I, I got a question. So, um, mm -hmm. 
who was who was John Knox, K N O X? He had write the new confessions of faith. <clears throat> where and where the was it? the order for the newly created Reformed Church, the Kirk. Yep, the Kirk. And what country was that? Uh, Scotland. Yes, right. And yes. the name of that church was the Presbyterian Church Church of Scotland. Yep, this is it's the mostly called the Presbyterian Church, and that's that's mine. I, he's my boy. Um, <laughs> around 1589 and 15 yeah. through 1566 he was a, he was then a disciple of calvin he went to geneva and studied with calvin and went back to to scotland and said we're going to become calvinists uh -huh. <laughs> so there's um there's a royal person who was one of the reformers we studied henry the eighth henry yes. yeah what country was he in? England. England. Right. England. And uh, that was later yet. Um, and what denomination did he found? Protestant Reformer. What's but the name of the the name of the denomination? In England it's one name and in America it's a slightly different name. Is the Roman Catholic Protestant? No. No, 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 no. Ah, <laughs> those are two different. Into things. the Protestant. I know. I don't put everybody together. Into the, the family Protestant union. Reformation. Uh, okay. Wasn't it? Wasn't it in the Protestant Reformation as it well? Was the Reformation, but what's the name of the denomination? <sighs> You're working on them. Hello. So. Um, so look that one up. That, that's, that's something you can check out and going back to your notes and studying for Wednesday. How about cool John Wesley? When was he? Was he before or after, after Calvin and Henry VIII or after? After. After. What country was he in? Uh, I have F, F, F Worth, England. Yes. Yeah, his, his, his big awakening was in Epworth in England, right. And what denomination did he start? Uh, I want to make sure. Uh, the Methodist it's Church in England? That's the Methodist, right. Ah. Because he was, a, he was basically an Anglican, a Church of England dude, but, and he didn't, didn't want to separate that, but he developed a method for studying the Bible and growing spiritually. And so his church became called Methodism. That's the deal. Um, those are the main ones. Those are the main ones. Okay. Um, let me see, what's the next question here? Number eight, characteristics of the African religion, their connection to contemporary black religion. Well, that's what we talked about last week. And several of you wrote about that. Can you um, can you talk? Somebody talk about that one a little bit. Yeah, I don't have my notes. It had to do a lot with uh, some of those words that you gave us. Uh, yeah. The medicine man, uh, medicine. Right. Um, what was some of the other Conjuring words? with voodoo. Yes. Uh, uh, secretism. Secretism. Ism. Synchronism. Yeah. Synchronism. Synchronism. Yeah. That's where they put together the they put together elements of their African faith with their Christian faith and put that together and you've got syncretism. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's your, that was your big word, Gary. <laughs> <laughs> then we talked about the conjurer and the witch doctors. Yeah. Yeah. Christians oh. and the Muslims. Okay, <laughs> see, that's my question. I didn't know if you wanted, for instance, like from the Zorba tribe, they did this, which turned into this, or the 
I didn't know if you needed this, the exact tribe that contribute what. Yeah, no, I'm talking about in what we what we tried to talk about last week was the the um, the, the in general what was common among. Oh, okay, okay. We're, we're pulling out. So the there was the magic, and there there was the uh, connection with her herbs and spices and and roots, and there was the visions and and some sense of magic. Everybody sort of believed in a high god. Those are the major characteristics. Oh, okay. That's why I said characteristics. Yeah. So okay. You have that in your head as you're going to. I'm going to not not going to ask any of these questions exactly like this. This is sure. getting you ready to know how to approach the questions I'm going to have on the exam. Got you. And how does those connect with the contemporary Black religion? It was part of the, the trend for when the slave owners were letting the um, Blacks go to church, uh, mm -hmm. so to speak. And and they wouldn't let they wouldn't let the blacks understand most of what the Bible was really all about, but they would just preach to them about how to uh, how the masters and the and the missuses would would uh, say, "Don't steal my chickens, don't 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 take my water villas and, and pigs and so such." Mm -hmm. But so then there came the, then there came some black preachers that came through, and even when they did get to go to see these black preachers. The, the slave owners would also send uh, somebody to trail them to make sure that they wasn't trying to plan a way of escape. Right. But, but what carried over into the black churches today from, from that African, from those early African experiences, that was some of the troubles they had trying to, trying to worship, which... Well, some of their basic... Uh, the dance and the praise, the way yeah. that they do it. Because uh, uh, one of them was called Ring Shout. Mm -hmm. uh, that was carried over into the church uh, because it, it was basically looked at as the musical and artistic dance of the religion that still goes on today in some parts of the South. Yeah, well, and 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 uh, the, the basic uh, um, emotionality that, that was very different from white religion, mm -hmm. at least up until mm -hmm. later in, in, in white history. Yeah. yeah. And well, you have something about Mr. Gullah, Gullah Jacks on there? He's yeah, the one. Talk, talk about Gullah Jack. You did he was one of those people on him. that was uh, one of those uh, people that was going to try to start a revolt. Okay. But then the people got got wind of it and uh, tried to stop him. And also, he, they seen that Gullah had a kind of magical effect on the people. They was kind of like in a trance. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, he was he was a, a, a African religious priest, and he had a real sense of the presence of uh, the spirits with him, and they they followed him. He also had a, a mysterious root that he told people to chew on the night before the revolt and that would make them you know, make them successful so that that was a piece that got carried into uh american history without actually calling it that yep exactly uh dr Sawyer. yes what about uh last week we talked about uh you mentioned um a man by the name of howard thurman too mm -hmm. so i did and, um and His book is Jesus and the Disheartened. Disinherited, yeah. Disinherited, my fault. Go ahead, Malik. Oh, uh, I know you mentioned that he was the mid 20th century religious leader and pastor and preacher and a teacher and something about Daytona, Florida. Uh, yeah, yeah. His, his and, early spirituality, we talked about that a little bit. Yeah. You might remember what I so told you about. Thurman? I don't think so. Could you repeat it? See if anybody remembers, then I'll, then I'll talk about it. So when he was a kid, he would go out in the, into the woods 
and he yeah. had a favorite tree and he would sit by that tree and he felt a communion with that tree. He felt that tree was tuned into him and he to the tree. There's a, a, a nature spirituality in him. He also had a closeness to God and the universe when he was walking on the, on the seashore in Daytona. And, and that, that is a carryover from the African religions. This was still in, still in his heart because his grandmother was a slave, not born in Africa, but that's, there's that connection. Um, mm -hmm. Also, he, I, didn't, I, I also mentioned he was born with a film over his eyes. That's also a piece of African nature carryover. Yeah. Uh, and he was a major Christian theologian. <clears throat> um, Dr. Story, while I was working last night, I ran across two things that were very interesting. And, Tell us all about it. Uh, the name Morgan Goodwin. <clears throat> he was a early Christian evangelical, and he had wrote a book that he tried to give to the Negro and Indian uh, slaves at that time. Mm -hmm. To, uh, enlighten them on the studies of Christianity. Okay. And the, the other one is just part of what we've been talking here about how uh, blacks and slaves uh, uh, were able to uh, study religion. Uh, in one part, it was uh, something that's called the Invisible Institution, right. where they would go out in the woods away from the slave masters, where the slave masters wouldn't be able to hear them, and they would practice Christianity out in the woods. And they practiced their own kind of spirituality, was a, which was a kind of a mix between Christianity and their African traditions, yeah. And that was the invisible. That was the beginning of Black Christianity. We're going to study more about that next week or the week after spring break, in fact. So oh. you're way ahead of us. Well, I only uh, ran across that because of uh, my pursuit of theology class. Well, that's good. So that that brings. I'll let I'll stop. Uh, pull over. Pull off for a second. And say the assignment for the week after spring break is in the Pym and Pym textbook. The Fortress Introduction to Black Church History. I never can remember exactly. Um, and we're going to read the introduction only, the first 19 pages of the book. And that's going to talk about basically how these African captives were introduced to Christianity in lots of different ways. And as you read that, think about who some of the people they name. And that's that's probably one of them. I can't remember if that's in this book or not. Um, and um, the events, the events that were happening in the culture at the time, as well as what happened to those slaves. Uh, and and kind of look at that. So that and that's that's the transition. Here, here's here's the logic of what I've got. I've I've got us into colonialism. We talked about the Reformation because that sets the scene or the kinds of white denominations that then get carried over into the black denominations. See, now we, then we've talked about the African spirituality, then that gets com combined through Gary's word syncretism, through a, a, a hybridization of African spirituality and Christianity in early black introduction to their faith. That's what we're going to talk about in, in that introduction. And that's what we'll talk about the week after um, spring break. <coughs> after that, we'll then start delving into the, the four major black denominations, Methodism, Baptists, Pentecostals, and the prosperity movement. Okay. See where we're going with this. And we'll try to find those threads 
that connect with all the other stuff we've been learning into those particular historical developments of, of black religion. Uh, there's, there, in other words, there's madness to my method in this thing. <laughs> all right. <laughs> you can use that line too, uh, Kim, if you want. All right. Uh, questions about the assignment for, uh, for, the, for the week after mid, mid, midterm break? Introduction in the book. All right. And you can find that, of course, under modules in the preparation for the week after the break. It's very very uh, slyly hidden under preparation for the week after break. Um, okay, so um, what other questions do you have that you, we didn't get to put in the chat about the review? What am I expecting you to understand? I was wanting to know about the trends on, on uh, question nine. Yeah, well, what are trends? What are the trends we've talked about? We've talked about several things. The the historical, the things that were happening that brought it brought us into this time. The trends and events. The movement of the ships. I guess the kings are having the ships to go sail and uh, look for other lands, and then deport slaves. Those, those types of things, is that what you're looking for? Yeah, the, the whole slave trade is a huge event that has shaped American history for everybody, whites and blacks, exactly. Without that having happened, things would be different. Oh, that which reminds me, the, I'll come back to that. Um, number, question number four. We didn't notice that. When was the colonial period of Europe the first time that humans have taken and forced other humans into labor? No. 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 Oh, no. Ah, okay. When and where else did it happen? Egypt. Yeah. The Jews are the Jewish people, the Israelites in Egypt. Where else? Um, could also be in Russia. Wouldn't it be Germany? Um, I, I think there's been slavery. Uh, the, all throughout history, slaves were taken when countries invaded and conquered or when they had a war and they, they go in and they, they <coughs> capture people and those people were then slaves to the conquering heroes and they bring them back. The Romans did that, the Greeks did that, yeah. So all, all of those people that you talked about initially like, as you said, Charlemagne, he came in and then demanded that Germany and France and all those people convert. Would that be equivalent to the capturing, even though it was religion mandatory of a change? Well, they weren't enslaved into, into, chattel, into chattel labor. They, they were converted to a religion, but they were right. picked on with their... Okay. Yeah, that's the difference. So, okay. so when... when the Europeans started going into Africa and pulling people out of there to bring back to Europe and then eventually bring them back to the Western Hemisphere. What was different about that slavery movement than all the ones that happened before? Mm. That was talked about in Zerara's Tears. How they were trying to convert the slaves into Christianity. Well, that's you know, that probably wasn't that unusual. There's another piece of it that made it especially damaging and, and <clears throat> pernicious. Would that would that have to do with the Chinese and the Japanese as well? Well, that they, when they say some more, I don't. That's not exactly when they was when they was uh, they was uh, equated as being called Negroes too. Yeah, well, not yeah. So you're getting at the question I was I was getting at. What 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 was happening? What happened with the Pope's decree? What happened with uh, Zerara's record of all that? That um, what I just did to my screen. There we go. Um, that made 
the slavery of that period and what we've what we brought in very different. Hmm. I guess just the whole um, the supersessionism of you know in a, of a superior race. Yeah, yeah. But that's time it was real clear us Europeans were convinced that God has made us the promised people. That's supersessionism. Right, right. And God has given us permission to take over the rest of the whole world and do whatever we please with it. That was due to the, the, the creation out of nothing doctrine. Right. The earth is just kind of a fallen world and, and it's our Christian duty to take it over. And we had the doctrine of discovery, which says we can go into the world and discover it and take it over and kill all the people who are there and make it our land. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But there was one other element of that that had to do with that white supremacy. Mm -hmm. Why is it that the African- Would it be whitewashing? Say what? Well, uh, that was- Would that's it a be whitewashing? There, but that's not it yet. Um, who who were those slaves and why were they slaves? The African people. Yeah, yeah. and why were they sleep. specifically uh, singled out and said those are the popes who are going to keep and keep in slavery? Uh, light skin, black skin type situation. Skin yeah, the scale of race that said white folks. They're God's people. Everybody else is is only good for subservient roles in the world. Mm. And that gave us the right to say, right. once you are taken into slavery, you are a slavery and your children are slaves and your mm -hmm. children's children are slaves. And mm. The children are born with them still belong to the people who own their parents. Right. Mm -hmm. Because they're black. Right. That was different. So is that is that dealing with the hierarchy domination system? Yeah. Well, that's a part of it, that. That the higher those at uh, the, the top of the chain do better, but mainly it's that chain of, it's that chain of the the um, what I was, um, the the scheme the, the, the uh, I've lost the, the word of race. Um, mm -hmm. where it laid out white at the top, black at the bottom. Mm -hmm. it, it was very specifically the, it oh. was the, the Jews in Egypt, the right. Israelites in Egypt were not slaves because they were a particular color. They were right. just captured and they were able to grab them and make them, make them slaves, but they let them go. Right. You know, but under a little pressure. This is from part God. of the Anglos. Part of the what? Anglo Saxon. Part of the Anglo, I'm white. Uh, my my lips, the thinnerness. It was the Jesus is blue eyed. Uh, mm -hmm. Doesn't yeah. look like you. So if he doesn't look like you, you need to worship me so I can get you right. to heaven, type. Yeah, and so all of that. So they built this huge theological, ideological, political uh, framework that says. All of that stuff, white supremacy and erasure and creatio ex nihilo and the Anglo-Saxon purity versus all of you who are of darker skin are only good for being slaves. And we have a right to that. And we're going to hang on to that right to right. hell or high water. Right. Now, what does that have to do with contemporary America? <laughs> I mean, is it the extra credit question? <laughs> I mean, how much has changed? Right. Now, see, that's yeah. the, that's what I'm talking about. A trend. Here's an event right. and a, a whole thing that happened in history. Mm -hmm. Now, how does that apply to why things are the way they are in America today? Again, if you looked at the color of the skin, the light light skin brother got more of an advance than the darker skin brother right. and it's still in effect today yeah right yeah and it's it broke us really down amongst the culture because it is you light skin i'm black skin you yeah 
black light skin versus dark skin. You're more appealing to what I need done. Yeah. yeah. And the dark skin said I work in the field. The field and the house, yeah. right. <laughs> yeah. Are yeah. you bring light that. skin back in? Uh, <laughs> yeah. Hey, hey, that's enough, y'all. Uh, right, right, right. <laughs> <laughs> right exactly. Kim, Kim, you be safe. You be in the house. The rest of us is here. But yeah. you know, from a white light skin statement, we come back. If it wasn't for us, we the one that took the first beating. We the one that made sure to eat. And we the one that yeah. had to deal with him so y'all could get cornbread and chitlins. And, uh, Look, don't make we don't need all of those pork. <laughs> that's, what, that's one of our traditions okay, that came down true. eating that pork hey, and it causes a lot of right. a lot of stuff. It's now true. you're back in the history. What Does that today? go just what Malik just said? Would that be part of the, the expl explanation you're looking for also? Yeah. Like how they were given the slop of food to how they were just so below that's the reason they had the choice of what does I remember you speaking a little bit about that. So, so the who are the what are the favorite foods of black folks today? <laughs> Bacon, ribs, anything <laughs> pork. Yeah. Anything, yeah. anything pork, chicken, oh, chicken, beef? beef, steak, any yeah. any of those foods okay. was given. Big but we wasn't getting the steak like like the household oh, brother was. No, so you was in there eating steak, wasn't you? So what else? In, what else? I was in, vegetarian. Thank you. All right. So what right. else in right. American I'm culture? Vegan. What I'm else sorry. in American culture has made it so black folks have less of a chance to make it financially, health wise, right. monetary, finances, economic growth, yeah. uh, so, not being able to read and write at the time. So how is that? How is that connected to our history? We just did. It's still current. It's redlining. Yeah. Um, um, there, oh my God, it just went straight out of my mouth. Um, Educational wise, the, as back in those days, the less they feel we know, the more they feel superior to us. Right. Yeah. But in the current day, just white privilege. I'm allowed to call the police on you because I feel threatened. I'm allowed to just, you know, isn't that kind of it? That's it. Yeah. Only I call it white supremacy. Okay. It really just sounds like that's a nice thing. Supremacy but means I'm the white guy. I'm in charge. I can kill you. I can keep you under my thumb. I can make sure you don't have vaccines. I can be sure you didn't get an education. I, I can make sure that Simmons College doesn't have much of a foundation. Because yep. you're black college, that's yep. all a piece of white supremacy that's built up since the very beginning of history we talked about, from the beginning of supersessionism through colonialism, uh, right into the introduction of Christianity to the black folks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I guess you could say like with the modern time, yes, that's true, the, the white supremacy, but I think Dr. Cosby said um, what a two, uh, about two weeks ago, he said this modern day, it, they're okay with us being in their space, but if you really want to make the white supremacists mad, or what pisses them off is when we feel that we want to be better or better ourselves. That's yes. when they become angry. They're okay with us existing, they're okay with sharing this space, but if we feel that we want to start becoming better, now we got a problem. Right. That's, that's even, why Obama really pissed everybody off. This is... No. It oh, was yeah. a really smart, kind, Longer. thoughtful, effective Chris. human being who's a president of the United States. Uh -huh. Why did they attack the, the capital of the U.S. in January 6th? <laughs> because they're scared that the black and brown people are coming to get them. There's no longer. Yes, and they're scared that they're going this, to do this, to them what they have done this. to the black and brown people after all this time, but that is not the case. No, and history case. even states that. Well, yeah, that's, I think the Black Black Lives Matter this summer just no scared them to death. We all unified all over different states, all over right. Right. the country, the nation, but we have never, I mean, the records have even shown, the history has shown, we have never done what has been done to us. And they've always been more aggressive and more violent toward us. And we're, and that's where I think 
black and brown people turn on each other because we feel like we are too forgiving. And that's where yeah. the differences come in to yeah. Malcolm X and Martin, and Martin yeah. Luther King. Yeah. There's, no there's all kinds of reasons why why black and brown people turn on each other. That <clears throat> I mean, yeah, is... yeah, there, there's many reasons. There's many, many reasons, but we, we bump heads on that because some feel like we're too forgiving when it comes to the, the white man sometimes, you yeah. know, why do you keep forgiving them after all they done did? Where some of us like, we need to forgive them, you know? And they're like, no, nah, we're not doing that. But you should. Grace, there's something I had read uh, yesterday while I was doing my assignment for uh, Pursuit of Theology. Uh, yeah. James Cone had said the one problem that uh, the black race has to get over is that we have to accept who we are and not be angry at ourselves because we are not white. And he said that is one problem because by feeling that we're not white, some blacks feel they are not equal. Yeah. Mm -hmm. that, and that's because they can't imagine that they're not better. Making you equal. The only way we're accepted is through sports. Oh, look how fast they are. Wow, look how strong they yeah, are. Wow, yeah. you know, yeah. the football team. Yeah, he's I, I think that will come down to a, yeah. I think that will come down to a personal thing, though. Culture, I don't, it's also baked into the culture. The, the, yeah, the, the, I, I the black people have always been strong. The yeah. worst black man, I mean, the worst white man is always in the white man's mind better than the best black man always you yeah, can't in his mind become, you can't become equal to us in that mindset wow mm. yeah in, in his mind but far as what walter said black people need to quit being mad at themselves because they're not white i think that's an individual thing well yeah. I mean, if you if you look back now i i would never mm. no, if, if you look back through history during the 50s, 60s, and 70s, and how Blacks have argued with each other over our appearance and how we should look. Uh, I mean, once again, I think that goes back to an individual thing because... Well, it's like, should I wear an afro or should I get my hair perm? Should I have... Color? I, remember, I remember you talking about that. You telling us that story, but that was an individual thing. Mm -hmm. because well, you know I don't know, saying? because now we... But, Lucretia, now we got hair for sale. This hair is not thick and white. This hair is Persian. This hair is Indian. This hair is yakky. This hair is straight. I yeah, but we're also a lot of people. They're also losing a lot of money. And you're talking about someone that's in the industry. They're losing a lot of money because a lot of us are going back to our natural roots. So once again, it yeah. becomes a personal preference. But it becomes on how you feel about yourself once again. How mm -hmm. you feel about your personal. We got to go back and you go back to the 50s and 60s. We had a lot of strong black individuals who were speaking up for our people. And they weren't because they felt that they wanted to be white. And and even at that time, even if you look between the 1920s and the 30s and from the, that time from the 40s, 50s and 60s, we were all dressed alike. There was no difference in what we yeah. dressed like and what the white man dressed like. Mm. We, well, was, that's true. we was all- Everybody equal. had on a suit and all of that. My grandfather <laughs> was one of the top black businessmen down here in the, in the West End. And he was uh, what they didn't call him, the, the councilman, they called him aldermen. And uh, mm -hmm. and he was a Republican, and he uh, and it, he was not, and he was one of the blackest and, men you would ever see. He wasn't trying to be white. And well, we had our own economic status. We had our own banks. We had our own businesses. We had we had our own situation. Even though they was on their side of the track, and we was on we our was side on of our side of the track. I, and I, it, and we was I doing. think it's a personal thing. And then the, well, what's I crazy mean, is on his hip was my grandmother who could do what we talked about in our last class, Walter, she could pass. Well, and see, then what's crazy what with her say. history, with her history, that uh, old Kentucky home, that song, that she's a Rowan. So she goes back, her history goes back to that house. So Ooh, she was Indian and white, so say. she, yes. <laughs> she, <laughs> oh, you know, my whole yes, family. Time, time, time out, time out, time out. <laughs> 
hold up a second. We're, we're getting close to the end of class and I want to be sure we're covering stuff for the test. This is great. And I, the question I have to you about all that without getting into it is to think about is, does any of what you just were talking about and arguing about have anything to do with the major pressure that white supremacy places on the black communities of this country? Yes, they, they, they're still doing it. I think it does, but it, it, it may be in a personal individual thing. I, just just think about that. That's, and that's the historical question. How much does history really play into this or is it really just we're all doing our own thing? Think about that. So I have one more, one more topic we didn't talk about today. And that was, where, where was it? Oh, um, question number five on that sheet, mixing of church and state powers in, the, in, the, in that era, in the colonial area. And we learned of two kings, somebody, oh, somebody asked that question, two kings in two different countries in two different centuries that had to deal with the power and authority of the Pope. Who were they and what were their issues? Mm. Definitely King, uh, King Harry. One, right? King, King Henry VIII. Eighth, eighth, uh, yes. What was with his the deal with the Pope? Oh, his annulment of the first wife and yeah. the Pope wouldn't allow it. Right. He wanted to get a divide, divorce mm -hmm. and the Pope wouldn't allow him. And up until that point, every king had to do whatever the Pope said. Right. And then no, uh, no with Charlemagne. No, Charlemagne's not the other one. Not, 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 I'm sorry, not, not. <laughs> Charlemagne is 400 years earlier than that, 500 years. Oh, one minute. I got it written. One minute, I got my notes. Got my notes. The one who did the thing on Christmas. That was Charlemagne. Uh, got, he, yeah, that, but that's that's not in the colonial period. Oh, okay. Well, never that mind. Was, it was Christmas 800 of the common era. That's that's uh, you know 600 years earlier. So okay. there was another king that had that got permission from the Pope to do something. Henry got wanted to get permission and he didn't get it. This king wanted to get permission of the Pope and he did get it. And what was that? It was um, it would be the king of Portugal bingo. when he got permission. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. 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 And this this raises the issue a historical issue, and it's a political issue now, of church versus state. In those days, the church had equal power with the state, and what the Pope said had binding power. And the kings had military, and then they could force the Pope to do things as well, and it went back and forth. But they don't, we don't have that today. In this country, we say that the church can't tell the government what to do. Mm -hmm. sure? Separate from church and state? Is that it? Separation of church and state. Are we sure? <laughs> <laughs> it's getting slippery in terms of the evangelicals. That's true. Yeah. Uh, but And, and the church, this, the government can't tell the church what they can and can't do as well in terms of their beliefs and their practices. That's That's the... That's what was part of the genius of the American Revolution, where they had seen how the popes and the churches ran, ran rep shot over the governments and over freedoms of human beings. They said, we're not going to do that in America. So that, that we set up church and state as separate. And th in those days, the pope was a very important influencer of, of public government policy. So Henry had to go hat in hand to the Pope and say, can I get divorced? We can't imagine that today. But it was that going on then. Then um, when the Pope said, you can go and take to Alfonso, you can go and take people captive and take over those countries and take all the gold and diamonds <laughs> you can find down there. That's just fine because Jesus thinks it's a great idea. <laughs> my, my. Um, again, the church, so that that connection between church and state is an important thing to remember. That's another big event or trend that has changed dramatically in these days. Yeah. 
the church is losing more and more of its influence. The, 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 the evangelical uh, pr uh, pressure on the government is because their power is waning. Their numbers are going down. There are fewer and fewer of them. They still might be able to carry one more election, but their numbers keep going down, the white evangelicals. And they're scared to death, and this is a reaction. Mm -hmm. That's a historical thing, too. That that mm -hmm. the numbers on that. Okay. Any other questions? You got five minutes to talk about any other question you want to think about for the final. I mean the midterm. Mm -hmm. Dr. Sonia, is this timed? Is this midterm time? No. Okay. No, you take it on your own. Well, what no, is, I mean, like, I've had one and you had 50, you had 60 minutes. No. And it would time down. Okay. No time. You, okay. you do it on your own time. You, you know, I'm, I can't monitor it. If you, I'm asking you not to look things up on the internet. That's not right. Okay. Okay. You yeah. can use your notes, you can use your books, you can, you know, go back yeah, and look at, the, look at the recordings, but, yeah. um, you know, just don't do, don't shortcut it. And, want you, sure. and, and the, the whole point of this exam is so that I want you to be able to get in your mind, these are the important things that I want you to be kind of thinking about and remembering. And I'm checking to see if you've got some of them in your mind. Mm -hmm. So the test to be posted Wednesday and due in on Wednesday? Yes, sir. Okay. It gives my brain a day to rest. <laughs> if, if you have trouble getting into it on Canvas, which sometimes happens, uh, let me know right away. I'll send you an email copy of the Darn book. I don't care as long as we get it done. Okay. Sounds good. Do you have an idea of what the small essay question might be. <laughs> it's it's uh it's hinted at in this paper. <laughs> there's, there's nothing... You ain't right, Doctor Sawyer. You ain't right. I just, want, I just want to say that I'm never gonna argue with you, but that's ugly. Okay, Carisha, who's your friend? Look at this. This is Max. Hello. She's so busy. She's nosy. <laughs> she had to come in and see what was going on. Yes. He was having oh. he was having so much fun. That God, she, is she, she, she would not go away. She would not go away. And I can't keep saying shoot, shoot. So oh. she jumped up there. God she, love it. He wants to go to college too. <laughs> Ain't nothing wrong with that. So she's going because I trust me. Every time I'm in this office, oh. she's in her snowing, farting, and pooping right along. <laughs> oh my. I'd be like, my God, girl. <laughs> That's great. She she hears our voices, but she can't smell us, and she can't figure out what's going yes. on. Yes, yes. Uh, All right. Okay. Uh -huh. If you have other questions, you can always text me or email me. Um, okay. And uh, I've given you the assignment for the week after break, and next week you don't have to put up with Doctor Sawyer at all. Oh. So, um, Oh, I'm sorry. Who said that? I'm going to be texting and calling. Who said that? We'll be, oh, we'll that? be working on those papers. Oh, in the closet. <laughs> <sighs> I'm taking for a week. I'm taking for a week. Yeah, you're going to question. I got a question. Yes, Dr. sir. Floyd, Hit me we, so we don't have a, a reflection paper due this Friday? Malik, not hang this, up. Not this Malik, week. hang up. Not this week. We yeah. just got the test. <laughs> I'm, I'm tired. Um, well, that's right. That's a good question. <laughs> I'm sorry. So, that's yeah, get right. yes, yeah, yeah. turned in. Turn. Okay. A couple of you who are on here haven't turned in the reflection papers from previous weeks, and I need to get those this week, or I'm going to have, I've got some trouble that I've got to deal with. So, be sure to get back in touch with me when you, and, and let me know when we can talk. Any questions? All right. This has been fun. Yeah. And Max so you finally got us to argue. Look at <laughs> my prayers have been answered. <laughs> All right. I'll I'll look forward to seeing your your exams on Wednesday. Yes. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. you. Glad you. Glad to be safe. Have a great, yeah, great be day. Safe. Be safe. God bless you, family. Take care, Doc. Bye, everyone. Bye. 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 Bye.